Scoot up for a second and let's talk. Yo, DJ, roll that beautiful champagne footage. Champagne gang, Fizz fam, confidant. <laughs> Welcome to another sip, saver, and spill. <sighs> Y'all, I'm perplexed. I am. Because I happened to be perusing the streets of TikTok. And somehow, I ran across videos that had to do with love spells. Is this what we're doing now? Is this why we see an increase? of men unaliving women and women unaliving men because you're trying to put spells on people to hold on to them and it's either deflecting back to you or creating an obsessed monster is what are we doing is this really what we're doing in 2024 have we really moved so far away from god that we're attempting to make someone love us by force because you do realize that's what that is, right? It's your attempt to take away someone's free will to force them to love you. Has the self-love gotten so low that we've become so desperate to have someone tell us they love us that we're willing to do it by any means necessary, including conjuring up the demonic to make it happen? Do y'all not know the danger in playing around with witchcraft and spells? I have a confidant from Haiti <laughs> who can tell you how that'll work. I have a confidant from Trinidad who will tell you how that works. I have some spiritual confidants who can tell you how that'll work. What are we doing? What, better yet, where did we go wrong is my question. Because this is absolutely insane. And y'all need to send this trend back to the pits of hell from where it came. But we're about to get into these videos because I just have no words. But before we get into it, let's protect ourselves with some positivity. <laughs> Take those glasses and raise them high for our dose of empowerment. And today, we're talking about loving yourself. Loving yourself is the most powerful act you can commit. It's the foundation of your confidence, the source of your joy, and the fuel for your growth. When you embrace who you are, flaws and all, you unlock an unshakable power that no one can take away. Self-love is not selfish. It's essential. It's the wellspring of your strength and the light that guides your path. The more you love yourself, the more you attract the love and respect you deserve from the world. Repeat after me. I love myself deeply. I honor my worth and I radiate the power of self-love in everything I do. Here's to you, confidant, for you are worth it. Let's toast. Let's get ready to get into it. Join us in the chat for the conversation because we will be discussing it. <laughs> oh yes, we will. Are you ready? Let's go. All right, here is a new tutorial on the honey jar since you guys wanted a new updated one. Okay, so we're going to start by cleansing our jar and getting rid of any negative energy. You're going to write the person that you're targeting's name and birthday three times and then cross it with your name and birthday three times. And then write your intention along the outside. And for this example, I just put fall in love. Then once you do that, you can anoint the corners with an attraction oil and then fold it towards you clockwise. 
Now we're gonna put our partition into our jar and cover it with honey. And as I pour in the honey, I like to say, as this honey is sweet, this person shall be sweet for me, but I'll say their name in place of the this person part. And the cardamom is put in for love, lust, and loyalty. Orange peel is for joy. Cloves is for love and protection. Rosemary for healing. Some cilantro for marriage. And then next we'll be putting in some thyme for some added affection and some sugar to sweeten the heart and the mind of the person that we are using the jar on and some extra salt for extra protection. So when putting in the first petal, I will assign that one to the person I'm using the jar for. And when putting in my second rose petal, I will assign my name to that rose petal and then I will put that into my jar. Next, we're gonna add in cinnamon for stability and passion. I like putting in glitter with the intent of a beautiful relationship and then making it also hard to separate us from each other. And then I'll put in some of my oils that I mix together to make my little potion. Some rose beds for love. And then I'll top it off again with some more honey. And then I'll also say, as this honey is sweet, this person shall be sweet for me once again. All right, now you just put on whatever lid you have and light your candle. I dress my candle in an upward motion and put some herbs on it. And then towards the end of this video, you'll see a small heart that's formed on the bottom left of the jar. But comment any questions that you might have and only do this spell at your own risk. I always, always, always recommend protection. And there's a little heart if you wanted to see it. All right, thanks, bye. It's your casting a love spell on a fucking narcissist and this man end up unaliving you. So y'all, I'm finna give y'all a story time on how this girl ended up losing her life all because she wanted this man to fall in love with her. So first thing first, they worked at the same facility together or whatever. And the girl had just thought, I think the man, he was there for like probably two or three years or whatever. So when she came, she they placed her in the, part, in the department uh, with him or whatever. So I guess he was her like trainer. That, uh, they was like machine operators or whatever. So he was her trainer. He was showing her how to do the uh, ropes and stuff like that to work in the machine. So, you know, as time go on, you know what I'm saying, they chilling. Y'all know how it is when you in a set with a man and stuff like that, and then you end up talking to the man and yada, 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 and it go from there. But from the get-go, I don't think the man was looking for no relationship, and I don't think the girl was looking for no relationship either. But somehow, she ended up catching feelings for him, and he was only trying to... So, after months and months of them talking or whatever, she came to him, and she was just like, you know, I want to pursue a relationship. Like, where we stand at this point, because we've been talking for a long time. We didn't messed around. You know, we did this, we did that. So, like, what's up? So I don't think he was feeling a relationship. I think he was like in and out with his baby mama or whatever situation he had going on on the side. But I know he wasn't really into her. He was just trying to mess around with the girl. And then y'all, he used to try to like manipulate this girl. He used to like lead her on, love bomb her. You know, it was always one-sided with him. So she was just like, enough is enough. You know what I'm saying? I'm tired of playing games with you. So she laid her foot down. Basically, she was just like, you know, it is what it is. If we're going to be together, we're going to be together. We're not just leave it the fuck alone. But somehow, I don't know, this girl could not fucking get over him. And then what's so crazy is this man knew that this girl felt some type of way. And he just wouldn't leave her alone for shit. Like, if you don't like the girl, you don't want to fuck with the girl, why you want to just leave her alone? That's what I didn't understand. So then, y'all, they stopped talking for like a minute. Probably like, I ain't going to say a minute. They probably stopped talking for like a week or two. And they working in the same set, but they wasn't talking. Like, at this point, she know what she doing and stuff like that. So she don't have to talk to him. So, you know, somehow they end up talking. I think he ended up texting her or whatever. I don't know. But somehow they end up talking, start back talking or whatever. And... You know, it was like on the, on the same shit. Like, it's like they never fucking left off. The, the conversation picked up as if they never got into it. They never had the conversation about her trying to pursue a relationship. None of that. They just picked up where it left off and she never did bring it back up or nothing like that for a long time. So then months and months go by, they back messing around. They back, you know, flirting and all this other stuff. And then she brings up that she want a relationship again. And he just like, at this point, like, you know, I'm tired of you sitting up here every, every few weeks or whatever. You bringing up a relationship and all this stuff like that. But he never did come direct and say, I don't want a relationship. He never did say, you know, I don't, I don't look at you like that. He never did say nothing that he left that. He led that girl on the whole time thinking that, okay, it's a possible chance that we can be together. But he never did tell her like he was, he was indirect. Y'all know how narcissist is. So y'all, as time going on or whatever, you know, um, she was just like, okay, you know, they had started like, I don't know. It's like, they would talk, they would talk and stuff like that. And they would get into it about the smallest shit. And I just feel like, sis, if y'all get into it about the smallest shit, that should tell you this man is not for you. Like God is not going to force nothing at all. But obviously she wanted to force it. 
So they stopped talking for like a month. They stopped talking for like a month. But she couldn't get over this man for nothing. She kept thinking about him. You know, and it's kind of hard when you working with this person. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of understand that point. But she working with the man side by side every day. She have to look at this man that she didn't feel in love with. And this man don't look at her the same. After he done strung her along, he done love bumped her. He done told her this, told her that. And now, y'all at this point. So y'all, one day, I don't know, something came across her news feed where it was like, I don't know, y'all know when y'all in a, a broken hearted relationship and all this other shit that's like relatable to your situation start showing up on your news feed, whether it's Facebook, TikTok, whatever it is, it starts showing up on your news feed. She came across this little love spell, you know, how to get your man and all that. Maybe she was Googling this shit. She probably was Googling this shit. I wouldn't be surprised if she wasn't. So y'all, this girl started doing her research on love spells. She was like, um, trying to see like you know what could happen you know how crazy will people go behind a love spell she just started doing her research her research about love spells or whatever she got on tiktok i think she watched a couple videos i think i know she watched a couple videos because a couple of them she shared so she started watching videos about you know the love spell and all this stuff like that and y'all every video that i saw that that girl had watched or she shared or whatever y'all they was basically saying like don't do that uh people have unalived the neck the other day partner and this and that you know it's not that serious all this stuff like that but the girl was curious she was curious as hell that's why y'all gotta be careful what the fuck y'all do and who the fuck y'all trying to attach to y'all because baby this shit is not no damn joke but anyways so she ended up doing it y'all she ended up doing it one night and i think she was like she didn't have no results uh the second the second or third night or whatever like a few nights she didn't have no results or whatever so, so she was just like fuck it you know she didn't believe in it but then this man texted her after blue he texted her after blue and he was just like i miss you and he used it then texted so she was like damn okay you know he he you know she didn't really think of the love spell either y'all she think that she thought that it was just like a coincidence or some shit like he just you know he just texted her because like I said, y'all, they was on and off all the time. So she just looked at it like it was a normal routine with him. So y'all, you know, they talking, everything going smooth and stuff like that, you know, for like a week or two. And then he just got to accuse her. Like I said, they work at the same, um, they work at the same facility or whatever. So he got to accusing her. Like every time she would talk to another guy or whatever, or somebody would say hey to her, he was like, damn, you in everybody's face. Like he was just like make little smart ass comments, but he wasn't really just throwing himself out there to show that he's like, like he's like he's jealous or something i don't know there's probably another terminology i could have used but yeah y'all know what the fuck i'm trying to say but anyways she was like explaining to him she was like you know she kind of like why are you checking me you ain't even my dude then when i tried to ask you about a relationship and stuff like that you didn't even want a relationship and all this stuff like that mind y'all i don't think this girl realized that that love spell that she put on that man it actually freaking worked okay y'all i'm gonna have to make part two because i'm on my break and i gotta go back in imagine casting a love spell on a narcissist and he unalives you part two now first thing first before i even start i just want to say a lot of y'all in the comments talking about oh she got what she deserve and all this stuff like that i agree she shouldn't have did it but i don't agree that she got what she deserved because no person deserves to be unalived by another person i feel like they both was in the wrong she shouldn't have did what she did to him and he shouldn't have killed her this girl got two kids i gotta understand her youngest kid is three and her oldest is five and for the ones that saying that maybe he put the love spell on her first, I do agree. I completely agree. Because for some reason, she mentioned that she couldn't get over this man for nothing. No matter what she did, like she stopped talking to him, she was talking to other people, she couldn't get over this man for nothing. So nine times out of the ten, that sounds like she was under the love spell too. She just kept saying that she kept thinking about him. She was having dreams about him. Like she was, it was all the signs of, you know, her being under a love spell. Okay, let's finish the story. So okay like i said they was at work or whatever she was talking to this dude i think this dude spoke to her he was asking her something about um the job i don't know what they was talking about but he came to her and he was like damn you in everybody's face and you know she kind of brushed it off she laughed and all this stuff like that she was like i thought you said you didn't want to pursue no relationship and stuff like that why are you questioning me about who i'm talking to and all this stuff like that mind y'all the way the girl was acting you can kind of tell that she had forgot I ain't gonna say she forgot about the love spell, but she probably felt like the love spell didn't work because like I said, they was on and off, you know? So nine times out of 10, she probably looked at it like, you know, he just probably checking in like he always do. So they go to their department or whatever and he came up to her and he was asking her like, what you and old dude was talking about? What y'all had going on? And she was like, nothing, you know, we weren't really talking about nothing and stuff like that. She didn't really go for the detail about what they talking about. She just said nothing to him and he walked away. So she said when she looked up, he was giving her like an evil look. 
he was giving her like a real evil look and it kind of scared her so she went down there and she asked him like why are you looking at me you know if she was in a playful mode she didn't like I, I, she didn't think nothing of it y'all she didn't think nothing of it she didn't think that the i don't think she thought that the little spell worked like i said so he was just like when she went down there and asked him why he was looking at her like that or whatever uh he was like why was you in dude face that's what i'm trying to understand you ain't really asked me you said it was nothing but i'm trying to understand why you was in his face and she's saying the same stuff like why are you questioning me and all this stuff like that and he was just like don't worry about it don't worry about it whatever so they had stopped talking they left work he texted her and he was like you better not be talking to that dude that you was uh that you was talking to at work and she was like that's crazy and y'all what's crazy the girl i don't know what's wrong with her but she asked him again about a freaking relationship and he he now one thing about it the love spell i don't know how the love spell works but he still didn't want to pursue a relationship with her but it's like he was like obsessed with her he was trying to control her he didn't want her talking to nobody else type stuff so she goes home both of them go home or whatever it's the end of the day they go home and she said she said bye to him and he didn't say nothing to her he he just then he didn't say nothing to her he looking at her you know crazy and shit like he basically was in zombie mode i don't know i don't know how that shit go y'all but that shit is demonic as hell it's like i don't know he changed his whole face structure and stuff like that when he saw her like you know he would be having a conversation talking to somebody else but it's like as soon as he laid eyes on her it's like he would get in demonic mode like he would just be so evil looking towards her and she was like she just didn't understand so when she got home she texted him and she was asking him like what all that was about with you questioning me and you looking at me like that and all this stuff like that and he was just telling her like don't worry about it you will see real soon y'all and i'm trying to, i don't want to get emotional telling the story because the shit finna get deep as fuck so y'all at this point they like i said they at home they had went home or whatever and i think they was out for the next three days they was out for the, either the next three days or the next four days or whatever i don't know but he texted her and he asked her if he could see her that night and she was like yo come over and all this stuff like that and she happy you know she not thinking nothing of it y'all you could tell this her first time doing some shit like this because she wasn't really playing her cards right she wasn't cautious about she wasn't cautious about nothing so he came to her house you know he's sitting on the couch they talking you know she offered him a drink and both of them smoke or whatever she offered him to smoke and he was like, nah, I don't want none of this shit. It's like he was just evil. He wanted to be, it's like he wanted to be in her presence. But it's like he had hate towards her or something. I don't know. It's 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 crazy. But y'all, she said she was sitting, she was sitting on the couch when she offered him to drink and when she offered him to smoke with her. And y'all, he just got up and choked her. He choked her and he was just like looking dead in her eyes. The same evil look he gave her at work, the same evil look he gave her when he walked through the door. He just was looking at her eyes evil as fuck. And when he was choking her, he was just like, you better not get my shit away. You better not get my shit away to nobody. And she was just like, what the fuck is you talking about? Like, you hurting me and stuff like that. Like, get off of me, bro. You hurt me. And he just started laughing. He started laughing and he went back to his normal self. He went back to his normal self, y'all. And he just was looking confused. She said he was looking confused. Like, he wasn't even aware of what he just did to her. So she had made up some excuse about, um... Uh, her having to do something or whatever to the point where he had to leave or something like that i don't know i think she said she had to go pick up her child or something i don't know but he ended up leaving or whatever and he texted her and he apologized to her about what he did he's like i'm sorry i had got um i got too aggressive with you and all this stuff like that so i want to let you know that i apologize she was like oh it's okay and stuff like that she thought that she was sweet she thought like oh okay you know he 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 protective of me or you know he just crazy about me you know i don't know y'all okay so the way her house is set up y'all she keep her blinds open she said she keep her blinds open all the time you know she sit on the couch she smoke she drink you know and she just sit on the couch and she vibe and stuff like that she said for some reason she saw she looking out the window and he passes by and then she didn't really say nothing she didn't think nothing of it because she's like you know in her head she's like it, it that could have been anybody you know that could have been anybody so i'm not just gonna say that was him that's in the back of her head she thinking that she didn't say that out loud but she thinking that in the back of her head like that could have been anybody so then he comes back around but this time he's blowing his horn he blowing his horn hard as fuck and she's just like what the fuck like you know what's going on and shit like that so she calls him she calls him she like did you just pass by my house and all this stuff like that and he just get the clicking on her like yeah bitch it better not be nobody in there and all this stuff like that i'm gonna come upstairs and beat that door down and beat you down and this and that he just was threatening her left and right it's like he would get aggressive with her and then he'll come back too and he'll just be nice y'all this shit is crazy as fuck like this shit's scary i'm trying not to like i'm trying not to cry and all this stuff like that because baby it gets deep 
this man was in this girl bushes waiting on her like he was in her bushes under her steps under her car behind the fucking trash can y'all it got so crazy like he was he he didn't even recognize himself i don't think because it's like he it was like a switch you know one minute he was he was like real aggressive with her then the next minute he like damn i apologize for what i did i don't know what came over me and all this stuff like that that damn love spell but anyways i know y'all tired of these parts but bitch i'm at work and i ain't losing my job for now one of you hoes anyways i'm gonna go back in here i'm gonna make part three a little later probably when i get back on my break so at five o'clock i'm gonna make part three Alrighty, this is part three of casting the love spell on a narcissist and he unalives you okay first thing first if you haven't watched part one if you haven't watched part two i advise you to go do so so you won't be confused on this story okay so i believe we left off at the part where he pulled up to her house and he was blowing his horn and stuff like that and then he called her texted her and stuff like that threatening her talking about if he catch somebody in her house he was gonna pupu her and he was gonna pupu whoever he called in the house so y'all at this point this girl is scared why she didn't call the police right then i don't know but she was scared because she came to work the next day and she told me she was like if something ever happened to me just know that that man is the one that did it to me and as she was telling me everything that was going on y'all i told her she should go and talk to the police i did i told her she should go talk to the police but she told me she didn't know if he was just talking or if he was just trying to scare her or what but I left it at that because at the end of the day, she's a grown woman. You know what I'm saying? People going to do what they want to do at the end of the day. Like, I advised her to go to the police. She didn't want to go to the police. It was what it was. So, y'all, it was the same routine with him. He would do something crazy or say something crazy to her, and then he'll come back and apologize. But at this point, she wasn't going for it. At this point, she's, like, fed up because she see that it's a constant cycle with him. So, y'all, we get to work, and they walking beside each other. I don't know if they had a conversation. She didn't tell me that they had no conversation or nothing like that, but she was walking beside him, y'all. The girl looked as scared. He looked as mad as hell. It was just, I don't know. They face expressions was like they had just gotten into it or something, but she didn't tell me that part, so I can't tell you on that part. So, y'all, we ended up exchanging numbers that day. The day that she told me she was scared and she felt like he was going to hurt her, we ended up exchanging numbers. Okay, so I don't know exactly what day this was, but it had to be the day that we was out because it was like three in the morning. She woke up because she heard some noise at her door. She didn't think nothing of it, so she didn't go to the door. She didn't ask who is it. She didn't like do nothing, but she knows she heard some noise at her door or whatever. So y'all, she tell me she was about to take her daughter to school and this man was laying in front of her door. He didn't knock, he didn't call, he didn't text. Y'all know usually he would text and be like, can I come over or you know or something like that or he'll either threaten her or something but at this point he just he popping up not saying shit at this point so she gets scared because it's like she don't know when he gonna pop out you know what I'm saying for him to be laying in front of her front door he don't care who see her like this girl got neighbors so she know that it was like a problem you know like she knew it was something serious so she asked him like as she was walking out the house she was like what are you doing why are you here when did you get here and he was acting as if he didn't even know that he was at her house like he, did, he was acting like he was confused, like he didn't know what was going on. And she was just like, girl, it scared me because his face expression, you can tell his face expression was like, damn, I didn't even know I came over here. Like, what the fuck am I doing here? So, like I said, we exchanged numbers. So she told me this over the phone. And y'all, I'm telling this girl, I said, call the police. I said, girl, for you to be showing up at your house, that's something serious. Like, you need to call the police. I don't know what she was waiting on y'all honestly i don't know what this girl was waiting on because it's so many signs that he was showing her that he's like he's not there no more he's not there like i don't know y'all this spell took over that man he was a whole different person like she said he was never acting like this at first never and i asked her about the little spell and she was y'all she had forgotten that she even put that damn little spell she did it she was like damn i didn't know that shit had worked and I'm just like, girl, you did that love spell on that man. That's probably why he acted the way he acted. And she was asking me what she needed to do and all this stuff like that. We both was doing our research. I was trying to help her research some shit. But when I did my research, they basically saying, like, you have to call a, a, a psychic or something like that where somebody have to put some herbs and stuff together. I don't know. They, it was just a whole lot of stuff. It was a phone number on there that she was trying to get in contact with or whatever. But they wanted her to pay and she didn't want to do that. So she just let it go home. So anyways, at this point, he's at her front door, just now waking up, looking confused as hell. So y'all, she telling him, you gotta go, you gotta go. I gotta take my kids to school. Like, what are you doing at my house? She said he didn't say nothing to her. He just walked off. He walked off, he got in his car and he left. She called him and asked him what was that about 
He apologized again like he always did. He sent her a long ass message. I'm gonna read that message to y'all because she sent it to me right before she passed away. The message does have her name in it. I would not be saying her name for privacy purposes. I don't know because her family probably don't even want this information out. That's why I'm not really just telling nobody who it is because I don't know. The family might not want that out. So yeah, let me go get my tablet and I'm gonna read y'all the message. Okay, so he texted her and he was like, uh, Whitney, I do apologize for how I've been acting lately. I know I've been acting obsessive and possessive over you. I don't know what's coming over my body. But it's like my mindset is different. I don't know. I look at you different. I don't really know what's going on with me. But I just want you to know that I do apologize and I will seek help. That's what he texted her. She texted him and told him that she put a love spell on him. And that's probably the reason that he's acting crazy. And the moment she said that, it triggered him. It triggered him again. He came to her house. He knocked on her door. She didn't answer because she was not there. She was on her way to pick up her kids. When she came back, her and her kids was getting out the car. This man walked up to her and said, a love spell, huh? This is what the neighbor said. The neighbor said that they heard him say, a love spell, huh? And then, pew, 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 pew. That was the end of her. That was the end. And after that, pew, he took himself out. End of story. Yeah. And for the family, if the family come across this video, y'all, this is not to drag her name. This is not to drag his name. This is just to let other females know and to be aware that that love spell stuff, putting, casting spells and stuff on people is very, very dangerous. And y'all, honestly, I didn't even realize how dangerous it is. I ain't, I wasn't, I didn't have my knowledge on how dangerous it was. I'm th I didn't even believe in that stuff. I didn't think that stuff was true for real. But I say this to say this, y'all gotta be careful. Don't force nothing, y'all. If that person is not feeling you, if that person don't want you, don't force nothing. Don't try to go put no spell on them, no no rituals like don't don't do that stuff because it's not worth it that shit it never ends good somebody always end up getting unalive behind situations like that and i'll be seeing a lot of people saying like oh females crazy they do weird shit like that it's not just females i promise you it's not just females it's men out here that be casting spells on females as well you just gotta be cautious y'all you gotta be cautious of who you let around you you gotta be cautious of what you do that being said y'all stay blessed love spell story because i'm on a roll today somebody just submitted this one to me and i this one is good i can't believe you guys are this unhinged let's get into the story time this one is t we're gonna call this guy andre andre was the one who submitted this story to me and andre's jamaican so andre was in a relationship with this girl and they had a very tumultuous relationship that means for whatever reason reason the relationship was always toxic it seemed like they were always getting together and breaking up getting together and breaking up until one day andre was like i really cannot take this no more i i really want out of this relationship i want nothing to do with this he said that a couple months went by and one day he just felt the urge to just get back together with the girl so he did he said that he would later find out that this girl was into some dark shit unbeknownst to him this girl had other plans she was tired of the back and forth so after they got back together andre said that they always had like a super close best friend relationship where they could tell each other anything so one day as a joke she winds up saying saying something among the lines of you know for a second there i was scared i didn't think my stuff was working i didn't think it worked i didn't think i was gonna get you back so then andre asked her like what do you mean by that and she said as a joke what if i did obia on you and that's why you're here as a joke though they both laughed about it and moved on he also mentioned that upon them getting back together she was really really pushy in terms of he said that he was never the type of dude to run a red light okay but one day during that time of the month for his girl she really wanted to do it and she convinced him and they did it keep in mind that this girl had already met andre's parents and <laughs> andre mentioned that his mother never liked his girlfriend but you know jamaican parents are hard to please one day the mom came up to him and said son i had a dream like i really don't like that girl you know i had a dream that your grandmother came to me and told me that she was working obia on you do what you want with that information but i i, I don't think you should stay with her andre is a spiritual dude andre is a spiritual dude but he's like obia 
uh, I don't I don't know. So he decides to go home and he sat his girlfriend down and started by saying, I know what you've been doing to me just to see if she would say anything. He said that my mother came up to me and said that she had a dream and went on to tell her what the mother's dream was. And he said, well, does that sound familiar? And homegirl would say, okay. So now here's the tea. She said during one of their back and forth, she said that well, she read somewhere that blood is a very powerful ingredient to binding and mirrors are also very powerful magic tools. So she thought, why don't I just combine both? She said that one day she missed him so much that she wrote his name in blood in the mirror and she stood in front of it and summoned him. She was also saying affirmation like you're obsessed with me you want me you love me you can't leave me alone she said she didn't think it would work because she had only did it once and it took him a while to get to her to get back together with her and she also brought up that time that they did it while she was on her he said he was utterly disgusted that she would even do something like that he said he left he said he did a cleanse on one of the beaches he wore all white and then walked into the water dunked his head to try to cleanse himself and get rid of her energy or her spirit around well he successfully stayed away from her <laughs> But, but she, on the other hand, cannot leave that man alone. He says that this girl is literally obsessed with him. Like showing up to his house, obsessed with him. Get cut out by his family and still comes back because she wants the man that bad. She told him that if he doesn't get back together with her, that she will unalive herself. And she attempted. Her family found her, took her to the hospital. And when she came back home from the hospital, guess who was the first person she went to go see? Andre and Andre says that it's gotten to the point where she done fought his mama. It's gotten to the point where she done fought his mama, his sister, his cousin. She done got jumped and that girl don't care. She want that man. He says that she doesn't present as a physical threat to him, but he's definitely afraid for the ladies around him because she has also showed up to his dates, sat on top of his car and refused to get off the car because he was with another woman. And um, yeah, now he's thinking about moving because he cannot get rid of her. And the craziest thing is he didn't do nothing. She was trying to get him to be obsessed with her, but some way, somehow, I never heard this before, but a Uno reverse happened and she winded up being the obsessed one bringing up witchcraft for the okra water and it just reminded me of a time where i did actual witchcraft with my best friend and mind you we were young we were like 13 years old so we didn't know any better but things did not work out as planned like crazy things started happening and whatnot so we're like 13 years old on the swing i'm telling her about the crush i have she's telling me about her crush and she's just like i read somewhere that you can actually do a love spell and i'm just like a love spell do tell so she's just like all you have to do is write his name write your name on a piece of paper and um fold the paper up and it was at the time when victoria's secret was really popular so they had like this perfume called love spell she was like spray some of that perfume on the piece of paper and put it underneath your pillow and just go to sleep so she had the perfume i didn't have the perfume i ain't had no money to buy the perfume so she, i was like okay well you do it tonight and then bring me the perfume tomorrow and then i'll do it tomorrow night so we go home whatever and she does it and then the next day we come we come back together and literally that boy was all on her the boy that she liked was like all on her they were like this and i was just like what it worked y'all so that night i got the perfume from her and i do the same thing and i like have my phone next to my pillow so i fall asleep or whatever i have the phone next to my pillow i wake up in the middle of my in the middle of the night and i get a text from the boy I get a text from the boy I like and I'm like wait a minute I know that this just didn't just work like that right so at that point I was like what my man my man my man I had that boy wrapped around my finger for like a whole week y'all but like weird stuff started happening so first thing that happened is I caught my period for the first time and if you know you know caught my period for the first time and then like I fell down a flight of stairs <laughs> fell down the flight of stairs and I ripped my only winter jacket. Now this may seem like little juvenile things, but like I said, we were 13. So at the time, like that's big deal. Like that's a big deal, those things that were happening. So I was just like, you know what? I think that this is like karma or something for me doing that love spell on the boy. I say all this to, t to say that you cannot do anything that 
will make a person go against their own will. Like I'm to this day, I'm big on manifest manifestation and all that stuff, but you cannot make a person fall in love with you and you cannot make anybody do anything against their own will. Like that's something that we learned in like Disney movies back in the day. So yeah, y'all just be careful with like any of that stuff. Like I don't suggest to do it. Like just stay away from it. And doing a love spell on somebody and then it all comes back to destroy you. You see my face? So you know I'm back with another spooky story. Someone submitted this story and told me it was about their cousin. We're gonna call her cousin Linda. So Linda met this guy, we're gonna call him Dodo, at work. Linda went from literally barely caring about being at work until Dodo joined the team. Dodo would bring this sense of excitement to work, where Linda was just looking forward to going to work because at least Dodo was gonna be there. So Linda and Dodo would go on to build this friendship. And they were inseparable. They spent a lot of times together at work and outside of work so Linda really got to know the ins and outs of Dodo and when they would spend all these times together it would get late and sometimes Linda just wouldn't feel safe to like go home so she would just stay the night so while getting to know him Linda admitted to having feelings for Dodo but no one knew if Dodo felt the same because Linda decided to not disclose that information and of course you know knowing the ins and outs she knew that Dodo already had a couple of options anyway but according to Dodo, those women were just sexual relationships. Fast forward one day, Dodo's grandfather unfortunately abruptly passes away. And to help Dodo get his mind off of things, Linda being the best friend that she was, so to take his mind off things, it decided to go out to a bar. They got drunk and came back home. While they were home and Linda was consoling him, one thing led to another and they did the boom pa doom pa doom Now, Linda. Anyway, so the next day they woke up, they didn't really talk about it. Linda proceeded on being there for Dodo throughout his entire grief period. And throughout the period of him grieving, they did not hook up again. However, Linda's feelings grew. One day, Linda finally said, you know what, I'm done hiding these feelings. So she confesses her feelings to Dodo. And Dodo actually felt the same. Dodo actually admitted to being in love with her and he was just scared of ruining their friendship. So they would go on and have like this flirty-esque friendship. They were basically best friends by day and doing the boom ba doom ba doom making the bed rock by night. Everything was great until Linda was like, when are we gonna be together? We've been doing this cute bestie cat and mouse type of game for a while now, like was T. And every single time that conversation would come up, it seems like there was always a blockage on his end. Linda was ready to be a girlfriend, shit. Linda was ready to be a wife today. But there was a blockage for him. So Linda thought since her family is already privy with voodoo, she might as well exercise what she actually knows and just basically give him a little kick to make him see her as, you know, a potential mate. So she did what any reasonable person would do and fed him a voodoo pasta. And that was just step one. Because she likes to go big or go home, she admitted to also giving him a potion. And the man was head over heels. He was so head over heels that he forgot about everybody in his life. That is until his family got involved. His family, knowing that something wasn't right, got involved and decided that they were going to bust him out of this relationship. So, so one day they got him. All that Linda knew was that she came home one day and that this man disappeared for months and she had no idea what happened to him or even where to find him until one day being the desperate girl that she is when suddenly in storms an angry dodo to backtrack when dodo's family got him they uncovered the truth about what his girlfriend was doing to him they took him out of whatever she put him under when he came back to realize as much as he tried to ignore the urge he just had to see her so he would storm to her house kick her door down notices that she was sitting right there linda being excited that he came back but also automatically noticing that his demeanor was different he beat linda so bad that linda suffered such serious surgeries she has lost all her teeth dislocated her jaw broke a few of her limbs and he attempted to set her house on fire so she escaped by literally just a hair one of her neighbors heard the screaming, saw Dodo running out of that house and ran inside to her rescue. Till this day, she has chronic pain and she is still suffering the consequences of that love spell. Now, some of y'all gonna get enough of playing with love spell. Client just hit me up, did a love spell and now her ass is in the hospital. Not because anything exploded. 
Not because anything caught on fire. Not because any ex-girlfriends doing work. Because she simply decided to go to a reader that told her that she needed to do X, Y, and Z and go look on YouTube at this spell. So she went on YouTube and did this spell, not knowing that this boy is heavily protected in voodoo because his grandmother is a tata. So the rituals that was done came back and actually effed her up in her car and everything else. Y'all better stop playing with people. Let me tell you something. Some of these women are so obsessed with a man, they want to put witchcraft on him. They do a love spell. They want him obsessed with them, right? Once you put that love spell on that man, and now he obsessed with you, guess what? Your ass might end up on a lie. I don't care what. I don't want that motherfucker that bad to walk around here putting witchcraft on somebody to make them want me. If I had to make a motherfucker want me, I don't want him. I don't understand. Who the fuck even do that? Sometimes y'all be hearing about some of these women getting on a live. I hate to say it. Somebody gonna get mad. Some of that be because they done put voodoo on that man. And now he is really obsessed with them. She tired on. She ready for a relationship to be over with. Now for whatever reason. And now he, now he can't take it. Because he gone crazy literally by her. Because she did it. Man, let me tell you something. Ain't that much love in the fucking world. You got to love yourself first. If I got to put... And I'm going to tell you ways to it in my next video. How they put love still on the man. You got to be surprised what people will do to keep, to keep them a man. I actually think she already knows. And I think that's part of the reason why she's getting them to begin with. But follow me here. What I'm about to say is purely my opinion, speculation, allegations, whatever you want to call it. But what I think has happened is that she did a love spell on Blueface before, probably initially when they met early on, something like that. And that love spell backfired. That's why we see her have the behavior that she has. She goes from these two completely different extremes, right? There's one extreme of being completely done with him. She don't want to deal with him no more. You know, it's F him, name the baby, her junior. You know, she gonna raise him by herself to tattooing his face on her face again. From getting the biggest piece covered up of him on her neck, to getting another face. From being so done with him and moving into her own, you know, not wanting to deal with him no more, to moving back into his place. Like, I think that that actually was a love spell that she did on him and it backfired. And that's why we see her having the obsession that she has with him. And the thing is, each tattoo is just gonna make it worse and worse. And now they brought a child involved into the situation. And listen, having a child with a karmic partner is not easy, period. Let me be the first one to tell you. <laughs> and I did not have the type of relationship that these people have. I just had kids with a karmic. And I can tell you, ooh, baby. May the force be with her. I, I was just scrolling on my timeline being nosy and I came across this video and in the video this girl was talking about sex magic. I know it's getting spicy but hear me out. So that triggered a memory I forgot I had about a legit time my friend messed with a demon and by messed with she slept with one. So this is what happened. Story time part one. So like I'm gonna try to keep this as blunt as possible. I have a friend who love hood niggas and there ain't nothing wrong with that because everybody has their type. So she started fucking with this guy that she met on Facebook. Bada boom, bada bang. Uh, he comes over to her house. Rule number one, never invite anybody that you're gonna fuck with to your house. Everybody's house should always be sacred. They have to earn their interest. They don't just come on the first time. Now I'm not saying you can't fuck with them on the first day because let's be real, we're in 2022. But your house, your apartment, your whatever is a sacred space. Treat it as up. Just my opinion. Don't mean nothing else to nobody outside of me. So it's also important to know he's heavily gang affiliated. And by gang affiliated, I mean this nigga's in the trench. Friend ended up messing with a demon. Well, let's get right back into it. So she like hood niggas, no big deal. So in the last part, when I said he was gang affiliated, I don't mean like, oh, I have a click. No, he was, he, 
like he would openly talk about his trauma and the bodies he's caught because like he said it's not like they're ever going to be found i said that's my cue because as y'all know if y'all been on here for a while i come from a spiritual family grandmother was psychic my mom's psychic a lot of my aunties are psychic you know in a way i've just grown up the hood don't fuck with me and i don't fuck with the hood because i just don't want to have the worry of every third wednesday out of the month i might get hate crime so they keep fucking around for like a month and a half right it's going pretty consistent but i noticed her energy started changing and she even noticed her energy started changing i didn't want to tell her it was the nigga because you know us have the gay best friends the gay best friends always know because people forget they just think gay is a personality trait but they forget we niggas too so we know when a nigga ain't shit, cause sometimes we ain't shit. Part three down below. We on the phone one night having one of our annual best friends gossip sessions. And she's telling me how she's just haven't been feeling herself. And I've never been a bitch to beat around the subject. I'm like, bitch, it's shit nigga. Cause I'm not one to skate around the truth. Love her to death. But my girl's like, what do you mean? She's like, what do you mean? I'm like, girl, he said he took bodies and they would never be found. And she's like, so I'm like, girl, if you grew up in spirituality, if you know, you know that whenever a person takes a life, especially gangbangers or murderers or anybody who takes lives outside of their predestined path that they're supposed to take, those spirits attach to you. Now, I don't know what y'all believe, but that's not my business. All I know is this, whenever you kill somebody, this is just me speaking, and it's not justified, i.e. self-defense, those spirits will attach to you. So that's why when I say a person has bodies, whether you're psychic or not, he has bodies attached to him, whether they're visible to the naked eye or not. And depending on how they die is the darkness they carry. So after I tell her, like, my girl, he has bodies on him in the spirit realm, definitely, that carry dark energy with them. Because just to break it down in black and white, you can't take a life and not pay a price. Because if you won't pay it in this life, you're going to pay it in the next. So boom, me and her continue talking, right? And it, so we get on to her, their sex life, right? And she's like, the sex is good. And I'm like, well, I'm good. I'm glad one thing is good. And see, me and my friends, we some gutter nasty hoes. So I'm like, girl, what do he be doing and stuff like that? Because you know me, I'm trying to vicariously live through my friends. So she's telling me and she's like, yeah, he be hella aggressive. And I'd be like, what you mean? And she was like, every time he's about to mm in her, he tells her to call him a demon. Like, I couldn't make this shit up if I wanted to. And I'm not even going to act like this is the first time I've heard a guy, especially somebody who gang affiliated or in, just into the street life. A lot of them be like, you know, I'm a demon. I'll be on a demon time and stuff like that. And not, I'm not talking about the demon time Beyonce's talking about. Like, guys in the street will call themselves demons. And a lot of times they are because you know that saying, when somebody shows you who they are, believe them the first time. So I said to her, do you actually call him a demon? And she's like, yeah, but not that often. He only asked me to call him that when he's about to come. I'm like, girl, when he's about to what? I'm trying to use PG language because I feel like for me using the N-word and all those story times before this, it might get taken down. But I was like, when you're about to climax, that's the most powerful time to manifest. But she's telling me, you know, she don't like to do it, but you did it. So anyway, of course, she's like, what do I do? And I'm like, girl, I don't know what to tell you because you're an idiot. Because it wouldn't be me. Actually, it could have been me because, bitch, I've been a dumb bitch in the past, too. So the only thing I could tell her is to think of is uh, put a Bible verse above your door. Now, as y'all know, I'm not Christian. I'm not believing the Bible is a spell book. So take that up with your mammy if you don't like what I'm saying. And in certain black spirituality practices, they use Bible and certain scriptures to help with their spell work and their manifestation. Now, my granny, she was a Christian woman, but she knew certain scriptures uh, to do what they needed to do. So I tell her, girl, get some parchment paper. If you don't have parchment paper, um, get a brown paper bag. Make sure you don't have no writing on it. Rip the brown paper bag off to where it's bare and write Psalm. I think it was Psalm 35 verse 8 and dip it in ammonia and put it over your door. Like fold the paper up and put it over your door. Thumbtack it, just put it over your door. And I tell her, you have to believe you're gonna be protected because otherwise these are just empty words. And then she's thinking, she's like, oh, so is this gonna like banish them from my house? I said, bitch, stop watching Charmed. Stop watching Charmed. This is not gonna do like a force field around your house. However, it's a good verse for the offense. So anybody who comes in there with an ill spirit, just know the certain nature. Do they get sick? Do they get tired? Do they get a headache? Those are telltale signs that your magic, your manifestations, your verses are working for you. Part five, the ending. So we get off the phone and she actually does. It. And I'm saying she actually does it as in I'm shocked because you know, a lot of times we all have those friends that a lot of them want the ending, but they don't want to put the work in. Like you can't want a solution and not work through the problem. So they went out to eat, right? And then he was fine the whole night. They got in, I would say probably about 11 midnight. You know, they young niggas. So they're coming up to her apartment, you know, she's a little tipsy, but he's, he's been fine the whole night, remember? So they walk into the house, all of a sudden, 
he gets a headache and he starts to feel dizzy and woozy. A telltale sign, like I said, the verse is working if you believe. So now she's getting them like ginger ale or some shit like that because, you know, ginger ale makes everything better. But he still, he, you know, he has the headache. He's feeling nauseous now and stuff like that. So he's like, I got to go home. He gets home to his house and he calls her up and he's like, I'm fine. He's like, oh, I must have just needed some fresh air. Nigga, what do you mean? We was out all night. You didn't start acting a fool till you got back in my apartment. So... She starts texting me, right? But I'm asleep, cause a bitch like me, once I'm out, I'm out like a light. So I wake up the next morning and I'm seeing all the texts. She's like, bitch, it worked, bitch, it worked, bitch, it worked. And I looked at her like, did you expect it not to? Cause honey, when you believe in anything, honey, anything is possible. And I told her flat out, I was like, girl, I don't know why you're surprised because it's something you actually wanted and you had the will to make it happen. Because one thing about me, I'm never going to tell somebody to do something that I haven't done for myself. Because as my mama always taught me, I've never been the type of bitch to try to convince a hoe to believe something that they already got their mind made up on that doesn't exist. So slowly after a while, you know when you just start to try to alienate yourself from people so you don't text them as much as you used to, you don't call as much? They started just distancing themselves from each other. And when the guy asked, uh, well, what's up? Why are you acting all distant? And stuff like that. She told him, you need to get clean. She's like, I'm trying to go on the spiritual path. And she was like, you need to sage, you need to do something. And I was like, girl, I hate when the first thing somebody who's new to spirituality be like, say, leave it for the Native American people. Leave it for them. You can use incense, there's hella things, but leave that to the natives. Because what you don't know is sage won't work for everybody. If you know, you know. And sometimes sage in the wrong hands will make it even worse. And it's like, also, it's like I said to her, think about it. You're telling him he needs to cleanse himself, which is correct. However, for him to use sage, like, he is the negative energy, bitch. He's going to knock his own self out. But the guy, he took it offensive because he was like, what, you trying to call me dirty or something? So, like, and like I said to her, I was like, girl, he's not ready for spirituality. It's going to go straight over his head every time. And then, of course, you know, when you diss a nigga, you know, he starts calling you a bitch or hoe. Your shit wasn't that good. And like I said to her, girl, that's going to be the first thing niggas always do. And it was the first thing he did. He started trying to diss her on Facebook and social media. That high school shit. And I said to her, honey, I said, don't worry about it because guess what? He's going to die one day just the way he lived. And I kid you not, not even seven months later, he was shot and killed in a drive-by. Now, that's not me speaking it over his life. I just knew it was going to happen. That's why I'm so sick of these things. I'm mad you, girl. You won't say something to the other side. You won't say something to the other side. I don't understand how you going to black and kids. You don't understand what you want to say. You want that time I wake up. You can just look me wrong. Let me tell you, I got a story for you because I did something like this. It wasn't in blood, but it was close enough. All right, so boom. I started talking to this boy my sophomore year of high school. He was one of the few on my roster. I ain't gonna lie. I had I was talking to like like three people at the scene. But you know, I wasn't being a little a little thought box. I was just texting other people. I mean, these these niggas be doing it. Why can't I do it? You know what I'm saying? But. Um, I was talking to, you know, a few people. They was friends. Okay, I died. Anyway. <laughs> so then, COVID hit or whatever. And then, all of the other ones just started trickling away. And then, me and him, me and this one particular dude, just had my main focus on. We started FaceTiming more, talking more, whatever. So, started to pursue each other more. Like, me and him would talk off and on, off and on, off and on. And I never understood why, because it was always him. Like, he could contact me. We'll text, we'll talk, and then I don't know where he'll just go. So in the back of my head, I'm like, okay, he most definitely got a girlfriend or something because God, where are you? Like, where are you going? You can't just disappear off the face of this earth. Like, what do you do? So finally, I get my car and stuff, and then now he's talking to me more. And he's like, all right, now I get to see Michaela because I ain't gonna lie. I was trapped in the house like Rapunzel. I'm gonna give it to him. I was. So he couldn't really see me. But as soon as I got my car, it was a different story. So. This is when we start talking more, seeing each other. And then, lo and behold, I find out, of course, he has a whole girlfriend. Now, in my head, I'm thinking, I'm his girlfriend. So, it's like, okay, you're cheating on me. What's going on? Mind you, me and him are talking off and on for like a year and a half now. Then I get my car. So, now it's making it two years. We off and on. But now, we can finally be steady because I got my car and I can come see you, right? No. So, this is when TikTok first started popping. You know what I'm saying? First started popping, it was just getting in and getting in and getting. So, I was on TikTok 24 7. You know, so I'm scrolling on TikTok, of course, like TikTok, everything. Your phone just automatically knows when you're going through something because it'll put it right there on your feed. And it's like, 
who around here listening? So of course, I come across um, this love spell TikTok. So now I'm doing my investigation and I'm looking through. I do this is around the time me and him are not talking or like, no, we were talking, but I was barely getting any text messages from him. Like he'll text me and then won't text me again for another 12 hours. Then it get longer and longer and longer until it's like, I'm texting myself at this point. The timestamps was time stamping because it was in between every single message. So like I said, I'm on TikTok and like I'm scrolling and now I see this love spell TikTok. So now I'm doing my investigation. I'm looking into it. I'm like, hmm. And I'm checking the comments and everybody, yes, it works. Do like, oh my gosh, do it, do it now, blah, 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 blah. So I do. Just to protect y'all, I'm not going to tell y'all what it was because I don't want nobody ever going through what, what the hell I went through. That shit was horrible and like it's, it took over your mental space for real. So I did. With them. A day of me doing it, I started getting messages from him. And instead of it being time since in between them, he was texting more and more, getting on FaceTime now. So I'm like, whoa, like this is crazy. What is going on? So I'm thinking, okay, he wants me, he wants to be with me. Let's get it, let's go. Now, around this time, I told myself, oh, I'm dating to marry, this, this, that. But the whole time, I was really dating for validation. Because, like, at this point, if somebody's not pursuing you anymore, what makes you think that you could do a love spell on them and they just automatically want you? Come on now. And I'm a firm believer in what you send out is what you receive in this world. So what goes around comes around. Okay? I'm a firm believer in that. So for me to do something like this is crazy. So now he's texting more. He's calling more. I'm going to see him a little bit more often. All this other stuff, right? So then a situation outbreaks and me and a girl that he's talking to ends up getting into a fight. You know, getting into two fights, okay? So then now I'm talking to my dad and he's like, Michaela, like, what is going on with you? Like, this is not you. Like, you've never been the type to fight over a boy. Like, I need to, I need to get some type of understanding. Where did the light switch? Where, like, what is it? So I'm sitting there and I'm confused myself because I'm like, I don't know. I don't even know why I'm in this situation to begin with. Because if I'm being honest, he not doing nothing for me besides getting me attention every now and then. Was it really worth it? Like, be for real. So now I'm in my feelings because it's like, I just got into a fight over this boy and I got to go to school the next day. Everybody's going to be like, oh, Michaela just got into a fight over a dude, blah, 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 blah. And I never want to go out like that. Like, I start, I was going out bad for this boy almost every single other week like it was so crazy it was just so embarrassing for me to even go to school in general so then of course i stopped talking to him for a while because it's like dude like you really embarrassed but i cut him off but it was so hard for me to let him go in my head y'all when i told you that man was in my head breakfast lunch and dinner snack time middle of the night in my dreams all over the place every morning i woke up i had to check his social medias just see what he was doing i just want to check and make sure he's okay absolutely not girl away so then it got to the point where he started reaching out and started talking to me and i'm like you still with your girlfriend he no no we her blah, blah 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 i knew he was lying i knew he was lying but love just had me so bond i'm like nah he ain't gonna do me like that like he already had me going that bad he ain't gonna have me going that bad again so as time progresses He's going distant again. I'm not hearing from him all this stuff. So then now I'm starting to get in my feelings. And like at this point, I'm literally begging and I'm like, God, like I don't care if he just sent me a simple dry ass text message. As long as I know I was on his mind for at least three seconds out of the day, I am fully satisfied. I'm not over exaggerating. Like I'm being dead ass. If I'm lying, I'm dying right now. That's how deep I was into this. At the moment, it didn't sound delusional to me. At the moment, it was like something like coming from the heart. And I could not understand what was going on with me. So eventually I move out and I go move into my own apartment. And of course he's over there every now and then. But in that process of, you know, him not talking to me, I was talking I was talking to someone else. And I'm not gonna lie, I was really, really feeling him, like for real. But I was just so tied to this boy, even though I knew he was no good for me, he could not do anything for me. Like he wasn't in a good mental space. I'm already not in a good mental space. He, I know for sure he don't want only me. He want his cake and he, he want to eat it too. So I end up just cutting the other boy off because I'm like, I want to be with him. This one I want. Not knowing that this spell had my head solely on him. Like I wanted to leave him alone so much, but my heart just would not let me. And it just seemed like 
I did the spell on myself. One day I was sitting back and I'm like, man, like this kind of like backfired on me because like, I can't get him out of my head. I knew it backfired on me when I started begging on my knees for him to stay with me. Y'all, if I'm lying, I'm dying. I literally begged this boy on my knees, on my knees, my bare knees, literally to stay with me. Like saying this shit out loud is so embarrassing, but this is my truth. I don't give a fuck. I'm trying to let y'all know. Don't do that shit. That shit not. That shit nothing to play with. For real. It even came to a point where like. I had his childhood picture in my car. Like on my little dashboard. And he got mad at me because of a situation that happened. I had dropped my friend off somewhere. And he was sitting in his car watching. And he seen me pulling back into my apartment complex. And he thought I was lying about where I was going. And all this other stuff. So I did. I lied to him and told him like. Nah I was just going to do this or going to do because i knew if, if he knew that i was going to pick up if i said i want to go pick up somebody from my friend he was going to automatically think like he was like gaslighting me the entire time y'all like he, i was just so scared to like even like tell him the truth about anything because i thought he was going to trip about every single thing so now i'm sitting right here thinking i gotta lie and i'm scared of him he controlling me telling me what to do what i can do what i can't do what i should wear what i shouldn't wear and like I, uh, like he was really controlling me and me being the dumb delusional girl I was listening to him. Girl, you can't pay me to listen to no. Don't. Uh. Anyway, but he ended up taking his childhood picture and like ripping it up and I literally had a mental breakdown. I cried right in front of his face. He ripped it up in front of my face and threw it on the ground. I was like, why would you do that? I'm just sitting there crying. He looking at me like, girl, like, is you okay? I'm like, Michaela, this is my picture. Why are you mad? Cause I went in my car and I'm crying. Like, what the fuck? like that shit had me so crazy and it was also to the point where like i was lying to him because i was trying to maneuver my way out of certain situations so he wouldn't yell at me or like get mad at me to the point where one day he ended up getting in the car with me he took his gun into the car and i'm like whoa like what's going on and he asked me questions and you know of course i'm lying he was asking me a question about picking somebody up and like i'm like yeah like i just had to go do this go do that because if he knew i went to go pick up a boy from my friend he was gonna automatically think i went to go see a dude if a dude was mentioned he was gonna automatically say i was doing something with somebody so then he was like no you wasn't and that's why i brought this gun in his car right now because i knew you was gonna play with me and i'm sitting there and i'm like and he's like Michaela, go pump the gas. He like, matter of fact, give me the money. I'm finna go pay for it. You finna go pump this gas and you finna leave me the fuck alone. You finna drop me off back to where I was at. And I'm like, guys, I'm sitting here in shock and I'm like, bro, like, oh my gosh, you finna leave me alone. Now I'm having like a, a panic attack in the car while he's inside of the gas station paying for the gas. So I'm sitting here and I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I don't want to do, I don't want to do, I don't want to do. Then it came to a point where he gets back in the car or whatever and we're driving and we're just quiet the whole way and I'm trying to explain to him. I'm like, dude, like, okay, let me tell you the truth. And he, no, I want to hear the truth. You already lied to me. Blah, 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 blah. And then I'm like, now my heart is pounding, pounding so hard because I'm like, oh my gosh, as soon as he get out of my car, he gonna try to leave. He gonna try to leave. So like, I'm sitting here and I'm panicking on the inside. I'm trying to do everything in my power so he won't leave me alone. It's sad. It really is. And like, I know people gonna say like, oh, it could just be a soul tie and all this other stuff. Baby, I was delusional like this before we even did anything. Before. That's how I know it wasn't no soul tie. It was before all of this. <gasps> but we finally get back to my apartment complex and like we sit in there and like now we're arguing and this is the second time I get on my knees and I'm begging him again. And he just don't care now around this time i'm not gonna lie i was very very vulnerable because my dad did pass away and all this other stuff and speaking of my dad passing away he mm, he was i'm gonna just put it out there he was cheating on me whenever i went to chicago to for my dad's funeral i'm just put it out there i really don't care because he definitely was and he was showing me some drama somebody had made up about me and was sending me the messages while i was at my dad's freaking funeral while i'm down there i'm grieving right now and you trying to show me drama from your ex-girlfriend be for real i just can't believe i anyways i'm uprooting some trauma up in here for real i'm sorry let me calm down <laughs> okay but yeah like i said i'm on my knees i'm begging so then it gets to a point where like all hell is breaking loose everywhere in my life everything is just so fucked up my dad died the boy that i want and did the spell on is backfiring on me because now i want him even more and it seemed like he won't need less 
my cousin and my best friend is literally arguing in the same apartment that we all live in. My cousin friend was in there arguing too. My mama is mad at my grandma mad at my auntie. My cousin mad at everybody just mad. Everybody just on my back. It was so much. I was in such a bad mental space. So I just broke. And I was like, look, I can't do this no more. And I moved back with my mama. And the process of me moving back with my mother, he was still on my mind 24-7. And after all of that, after all the dirty things that he did to me, after all of that, while I was at my, I forgot to mention, I was at my apartment complex. I got my, I got my um, windows, my side mirrors busted out by his um, girl, his ex-girlfriend. I don't even know if they were together or not together. I don't know. Like, he was with me sometimes and then with her and then with both of us. So, I don't know. It was all over the place. But I got my side mirrors busted. She got came my car. It was just crazy. So, I moved back in with my mother and upon me moving back in with my mom, this is when it, like, really took a hold of me because I could not see him anymore. I could not be with him anymore. My mom was like, absolutely not, Michaela. We not playing it. Like, you finna get your shit together. So, me trying to get my shit to i can't stop thinking about him my room y'all my room i'm a firm believer in whatever your room looks like shows what your head space look like okay let me show you and before i show this picture i just want to put out this little disclaimer don't ever try to come for me in the comments or try to use this if you know me personally because at the end of the day we all go through, go through those depression stages where we can't even clean up our room and i'm a firm believer in i'm a speak my truth and whatever i just want to put it out here because i know some people who know me personally who gonna try to throw this in my face so don't ever play with me for real but when you're in the bad mental state nothing around you is going to be clean i don't care what nobody say plus i was smoking and drinking back to back y'all i was going through it okay so this is this is my bedroom like just stuff everywhere and i've never been a slob my room has always been clean like i've never played about my space ever so like for my room to be like this really shows a whole lot and this is my bathroom it was just just stuff everywhere like it's like when i look back at stuff like this it really just breaks my heart bro like it breaks my heart so bad because it really backfired on me and just to show y'all i don't play about my room like my space clean so don't come for me but like it was just it was so overwhelming for me and like even my brother and sister just knew like nobody ever said anything to me my mom never said anything to me too but you i could just look on their faces and they can tell like something right like michaela ain't never had her room like this like this is ridiculous but it's like in that moment i really kind of felt some type of way because my mama like really didn't talk to me but we ain't gonna get into it but it kind of made me feel some type of way and made me a little bit more sadder because it's like mom you see my room you know i i don't live like this you know this is not me like why are you not talking to me you feel me like i was going through so much and i just needed my mama at the moment but yeah so then i was just consuming myself like i said with alcohol and weed as much as i could trying to make myself feel better trying to get up and like do my hair do makeup put some mascara on trying taking pictures even though my room was a mess like was just trying everything every single thing to get myself back together and you know what's so crazy is i started calling out to god because i'm like you know what in the beginning when this all happened and like he first broke my heart i literally called out to god and i asked god for just peace so i can go to sleep because he was on my mind 24 7 and god gave me peace so i remembered that and then one day i was in my room listen because this is crazy i was in my room and i was high as a kite okay y'all and i'm sitting there and i'm just zoned out and then i can hear whispering so like now i'm looking around the room and i'm like yo what's going on it's three o'clock in the morning my brother and sister is asleep they got school in the morning what's going on who's talking my mama is downstairs so i'm hearing something and then it just stopped so now i'm looking around the room like okay and then i hear a voice it was like a small still voice like literally that's how i i can explain it and it's literally in the bible too but it was a small still voice and it was like you can't hear me because you're too far away from me and when i tell you the tears almost started rolling down and almost started crying within the next day i was listening to this gospel song that was speaking on every and it was so crazy how it just came up like i was listening to music on youtube and then the song just came up it was speaking on every single thing i was going through in the moment and i just started bawling my eyes out crying and then i started i started watching the um lady who played in war room priscilla 
uh, I started watching her on YouTube and stuff, and everything she was speaking was speaking to, like was speaking to my heart like I needed. Like I was feeling tingles and chills in my body. And then I went on Amazon. I bought this book, all of that. And I say all that to say because the only way I got out of this, and let me tell y'all, I don't care what nobody say, okay? I'm gonna turn on my pastor, okay? Because we might have a part three. Because y'all gonna listen to this, all right? I know I be cussing, I be doing all that. Like I be listening to secular music, secular music sometimes too. I get it, I understand, but I'm on a journey as well. And I'm trying to, you know, make my life better. Because I'm a completely different person than I was back then. The person I was just talking to y'all about, I'm not her no more. Like, I'm a completely different person. And it was only because of God. And let me tell you the situation that happened. This is a whole other story. But we're just going to let it fall into because it wraps with it all. And it just shows how good God is at the end of the day. Like I said, I bought this book or whatever. And then I cleaned up my entire bathroom, y'all. Cleaned up my entire bathroom. My room was still a mess. But I cleaned up my entire bathroom. And I made it into a war room where I started putting prayers and everything on the wall. I'm going to go show y'all. I'm going to go into the bathroom because it's still up right it's my brother bathroom now Like I said, it's my brother's bathroom right now, but like the prayers and stuff are still, because I moved out again and then he ended up moving to my room and stuff. But during the time when it was my room, that was the only space in my area, like in my room that was clean, the bathroom. And that's because I was literally listening to my worship music and I was cleaning at the same time. And it was so hard for me to not, to clean if I did not have my worship music playing in my ears. If they were not playing, I had no energy. I could not do it. Something was just holding me back. So I finally cleaned it all up and I turned the bathroom into a war room where I go in there and I start praising God and seeking God and writing prayers and praying to God and just asking God to deliver me from whatever it is I need to get deliverance from. Because at that point, he just got so far out of my mind, I wasn't even worried about him no more. It was like, I'm not gonna lie, he was popping up in my head every now and then, but like my main focus was just this depression. And that's like I said, that's the gateway to all of this stuff. That's the gateway. That's how you let the devil into your life, y'all, okay? So then once the room, once the bathroom was clean, my room was still a mess. So after the bathroom was clean that same night, I went into that bathroom and no, I took a shower. I went into the bathroom afterwards and like I was reading my Bible and I was just reading stuff. And then like I was recording myself also. And then out of nowhere, like I see a globe or like kind of look kind of like dust flying across the camera. And like instantly I just felt like I would just have the urge to just listen to worship music again. So I started playing my worship music and like I'm into it deep. Never been this deep into worship. And then out of nowhere, y'all, I feel fire, like heat go whooshing all through my body and I just start speaking in tongues. Come back for so then like I said, I'm sorry y'all. I, I had to do something real. But like I said, I instantly felt like just heat just cover my whole body and then out of nowhere i started blurting out a language i never spoke before so with that being said just to summarize for y'all for people who don't know i started speaking in tongues now i ain't never spoken tongues a day in my life like i used to go around the house and like play around when we would play church when we was little kids and like try to mouth and act like i'm speaking in tongues but this was way different like when i tell you it, it just blurted out and i was just crying and i crying and crying and i could not figure out what was going on in that moment and like as i'm doing it like i feel so heavy and it's just heat and i'm sweating so bad and then out of nowhere i just breathe real hard and then like everything just left for me and it was just back to my normal self and so I'm sitting in the bathroom and I'm in shock because I'm like, what in the world just happened? I've never experienced anything like it. Like I've grew up in church before. I've, you know, been in a choir before. I've worshiped in the church before, but I've never ever experienced anything like it. So then y'all, I started getting dreams, not just regular dreams, but dreams that started coming true. And I wrote them all in this note. Like when I tell you dreams for that. Okay, y'all get the point. But the dream started coming true. Like they weren't literally like the same thing, but like it was like symbolism almost. And like when something would happen in real life, it would take me back to the dream when I would have visions and like God was speaking to me. And like, it was just so crazy, okay? Now mind you, during this whole time, like I'm close to God now because of this spell. When I tell you God would use everything that was used to kill you everything that was supposed to be used against you 
he will use that same thing and turn it around for your good for your destiny okay listen to this because this story get even crazier okay so like i said i'm doing all of this and then like i'm worshiping every day i'm making sure i go into my war room every single day so then like i start hitting like depression really 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 bad like so bad to the point where i wanted to kill myself like i literally have a video of me like crying on my ipad whenever i was in my war room and like i have my um my goddaughter slash cousin with me uh she was like a baby and like i really needed her at that time like god just everything was just in place so like strategically and like just perfectly in my life because had i not had certain people and had i not had my little cousin with me i probably would have took myself out like i'm so serious like i would go it would be days where i would be so happy like so on top of the world and on fire for god and then there would be other days where like i would wake up and like i just don't want to be here like i wish i could just sleep my whole life away like just be dead like there were days where i used to sit in the tub and just think about putting my head under the water and just stay there there would be days where i would think about taking my car and just swerve it on off the highway like there would be days where i would just sit there and think like man if i just slice my throat real quick it'll just all be over with like when i tell y'all it was on me bad it was on me bad and i've never been like that and like of course i'm not gonna say that um it was all solely tied to the love spell but i believe in my heart that it was the root of it all it was the door of it all because i've been like suicidal before but not that deep y'all like not that deep at all like looking back at those videos you can see it all over my face like in my eyes like i'm a completely different person now like look at this video look at my face look at my eyes like i'm just i look so horrible like i was so depressed like looking back at this made me want to cry so bad so like every day i would like go into my war room like my bathroom and i would go in there and i would like pray i would read my bible i would worship i would do all that and like i said some days like that day i was like really really sad but there were days where you know like the holy spirit was speaking through me like to me like on my app it was just so crazy i thought i was going crazy but like at the same time i was happy on the inside so i'm like i'm not going crazy because like this like this i've been looking for happiness like this type of happiness like happiness within myself like happy true happiness and i only got that whenever i started building my relationship with god like for real like building a relationship with god is the same thing as you would do on earth like the same way you build relationships and friendships with other people you have to spend time with them you have to get to know them get to know their personality so like with god you have to read about him you have to renew your mind every day read that bible day and night if even if it's just a chapter a paragraph do something you know what i'm saying listen to your music every now and then you don't have to let it consume you but do it anyways back to the story i'm sorry so um upon it being time for you know this big thing that was going to happen because i wasn't broken free from that spell i wasn't broken free from that soul tie i wasn't broken free from you know trauma and all that other stuff that i had going on that was building up to that point in my life so although i feel like that love spell and the soul tie that i had with that boy was meant to knock me out god turned it around and made it so it can so he can allow me to be free from those things to break me from them, those things because then me and my cousin started going to church uh we both got confirmation it was so crazy she got her own confirmation to go to this certain church and i had got my own confirmation to go to this certain church so like now we both like whoa this is like destined like this is like this is this is crazy like some like can't nobody convince me god not real like i'm so used to religion i'm not used to this relationship that i got with this man up above like what is going on so then like i'm periodically going to church and i'm enjoying myself and then i get a word from god jeremiah 29 11 like everybody kept saying it to me and it was like jeremiah 29 11 like i need to tell you this word like god is putting this word on my heart to tell you and everybody just kept telling me jeremiah 29 11 mind you it is on my love vision board it's like knocked down a little bit but yeah that's that's my scripture i love the scripture so much so like now it was he was giving me little breadcrumbs and i'm just grabbing them and i like i'm looking for more and more and more so like now i'm pursuing god more and more and more although i was still having my sad days i was having a lot of bad days that the enemy was attacking me left and right i was still thinking about this boy every now and then but like at the same time like i was it was like a roller coaster up and down up and down so then it was this 
one service. My mama never went to church with us. My mama got her own relationship with God, but she never went to this specific church with us. So God was uprooting some traumas in me and showing me reasons why I could not communicate and talk to my mama. So that started getting uprooted. So much stuff started getting uprooted out of my life. And I was like, oh my gosh. Like y'all, when I tell y'all I was completely undone, like I felt like everything in my heart was just open and God was just placing it on the table and was just like breaking it all down to me. And it was just coming and coming. And my tears was just flowing like I get chills thinking about it every time oh my god y'all because that man really be doing his big one for free anyway so then this church service comes and like I know I feel it in my heart something is going to happen because prior to I was going to the church or whatever and the pastor um had said something to me one day because you know I had went to the altar one day and I was just crying and crying like y'all I was an emotional mess like crying every time I felt the spirit of God I was just crying just letting it all out and I have fell to my knees on the altar and I've never done that before never done it before and the pastor had told me after service he pulled me to the side and he was like hey when I see you on the ground crying I seen this big light around you and he said usually when I see that in the spirit realm that means God is about to do something in your life and he was like don't give up God about to do something in your life and I was holding on to that I'm like okay pastor like I hear you 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 real strong with God you got a good relationship I I want that so i'm hearing what you're saying pastor so i'm taking your word for it pastor i'm taking god's word for it pastor and lo and behold when god speaks he is definitely going to come through on his word no matter what he said because he is not a liar for real i don't know about these other men that y'all met before that these men be lying but the man up above he don't lie he's not never been a liar he's the truth and always will be the truth forever and ever so, like I said, church service comes and I invite my mom and my brother and sister and I invite my um, cousin. No, not my cousin. I invite my two of my friends to come. With. So they come or whatever and then they have this prayer line. So there's a big group of people lining up to go down this prayer line. And they have all the pastors and ministers and all the apostles, everybody down in this line with holy oil in their hands. And they're letting all the people walk through and they're putting their hands on them and they're touching them and they're praying for them as we walk down the line. So, y'all, here go the story. You might have to come back for part, part four, but trust me, it get good. So, now, we're standing in this line. As we get in the line, we're getting closer and closer. My knees are, like, buckling, like, buckling. I'm standing in the back by myself. I let everybody get in front of me. Like, I let all my family and friends get in front of me, and I'm in the back. And my knees are buckling as I'm getting closer and closer. And then when we finally approach it, like, everybody goes in, and I can see everybody, like, kind of, like, I can see the shift in everybody energy when they go under. It was like everybody would just need at that moment. And me, as soon as I go in, I look up at God. Because I'm like, God, right now, I'm about to let everything go. And once I get through here, God, I want to be a brand new person. I literally looked up at God. I put my head down. I took a deep breath. And I went through. And the moment I started walking through, I started screaming. Something started manifesting. So, like I said, now I'm walking down the prayer line. I look up. Say what I said to God. And as I'm going down they, the people start touching on me and i'm fumbling i'm falling like i'm like going side to side and people touching me and like all i remember is this one pastor had put his hand on top of my head and i literally went down and i started screaming so loud and then one of the pastors i remember him he was like oh my gosh and like then a lady started you know carrying me down the um line like i guess they were trying to hurry and get me out like i don't know so then i thought that was the end so like i'm out of the prayer line and, like i'm wiping my face and like i'm going to sit back down and i'm like whoa like that was crazy i just need to get that scream out that's what i thought i just thought i need to get the scream out oh no so then one of um the uh, one of the church members had called my cousin my friend that i had invited with me and me to the side and he was like come here come here i need i need i need y'all to come here and so like i'm looking like okay i've never seen this man before he's from a different church y'all he's from a different completely different church okay and he pulls us to the side let me go back i'm sorry let me let me explain this first it was a church service but it was from like different areas from different churches inside of the area so we was all coming together having a service so he put us to the side and he's like he said i can sense something right here he said there's a lot of hurt there's a lot of emotion right here he was like what's going on with y'all or whatever and like we was 
we didn't even get to talk or speak. He was like, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna pray for y'all. So he starts praying for us, right? And he has his arms. He's standing right here. I'm on this side of him. My cousin and my friend are like right here. He starts praying for us. I don't know if he started praying or talking to us, but as soon as that man laid his hand on me, as soon as he touched my body, I instantly went down and I started screaming. I was like, ah, like y'all, if I'm lying, I'm dying. I've never experienced anything like that. And on top of that, y'all think about it. I didn't fake this for a moment. I really deep down inside, I think my mama feel like I faked this whole thing because when we got home, she had a whole lot to say about certain situations. And I'm like, girl, are you trying to look keep those shots at me? But think about it. I had two of my friends come and I had my brother and sister come who play entirely too much, who laugh at everything. They don't take church service serious. They laugh at everything. Plus I have my mama there and I have my cousin there. Why would I act this out? Why would I play around like that? That's embarrassing. First of all, there's so many people there. I don't know these people. And if you know me personally, you know I'm shy, like around a large group of people. I'm not going to speak or scream or bring any type of attention towards me ever so i'm screaming and then the man literally leaves from my cousin and from my friend and comes to me and he's like come out of her come out of her come out of her and now i'm in this state like whoa what's going on so then now i'm back and forth out of consciousness i can hear him then i can't hear him then i go back to darkness and then like i'm hearing him then i then out of nowhere like i'm on the floor and then like now i'm opening my eyes and I'm on the floor and then he in front of my face and like I'm screaming, I'm speaking in tongues. Like I remember certain parts and like y'all, this church was packed full of people, full of people. Okay, full of people. Actually, I think they had, I don't know if they had it recorded on Facebook Live or not. I should try to go see. I'm going to try to go see and if, and if it's still up there. I'm gonna I'm show y'all. I'm gonna show y'all everything for real because I, I want y'all to know like this this stuff is real. You gotta be careful. You gotta protect yourself and you really have to have a relationship with God for real, y'all. Anyways, it's like I said, I'm going back and forth out of consciousness. Like, I don't know what's going on, but at the same time, I see my cousin. She's standing like sitting right next to me in this chair, and then I see my my friend. She's over there and she's crying like she's bawling her eyes out. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I have both of my friends there. So like, I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm aware of what's going on, but at the same time, I'm not. Now, mind you, I'm on the floor. So like, there's a group of people around me now. People are praying over me and all this other stuff. So my cousin said, like, mind you, I'm going in and out of consciousness. So this is from my cousin's perspective. She said once, you know, I was on the floor and, you know, everybody was the man who had came to us was asking like who are you like how did you get here and all this other stuff i remember them saying like this they was like i feel everybody that came over to me was like this is sad this is like hurt and suicide this is a spirit of hurt and a spirit of suicide y'all when i tell you nobody knew besides my cousin knew that i had so like i wanted to kill myself and then in that time in that time frame i never told her anything that was years ago when i told her this was like two or three years ago when i told her about this but during that time frame nobody knew during that video i just posted that i just showed y'all in here whenever i was crying with my little cousin on my lap nobody knew i was going through that nobody knew i wanted to kill myself around that time nobody knew so when he said that then my body goes into extra shock and I'm like, what? So now like I'm in and out, I'm in and out, in and out. Like the whole time, y'all, I'm in and out. So like I barely remember anything. But my cousin says a woman comes over and she has a Bible in her hand. And my cousin said, as soon as she started opening her mouth and reading the scriptures out of the Bible, I started going crazy. My body like I'm saying no, no and I'm shaking and I'm screaming and I'm crying and like it was moments where like I was angry and then moments where I'm just sitting there like crying and crying and my cousin was like Michaela like it was scary like it was crazy and then out of nowhere I just start coughing and I'm coughing and I'm coughing and then I bleh, I started throwing up it wasn't a lot of throw up but like a piece of throw up came out and it was like yeah yeah and everybody started you know, or everybody around me was like, yes, yes, Michaela, come on, keep fighting, keep going, keep fighting, Michaela. So then the people around me still praying, still going. The people in the middle of the prayer line, 
like while we were going through the prayer line, they had the choir singing, okay? So y'all, let me tell y'all how good this church is, okay? So while we're going through the prayer line, there's music playing and the choir is still, you know, praising and the praise dancers are still dancing. The entire time while I'm on the floor, they're still singing. Y'all, it's been a good 45 minutes now, okay? I was on that floor for an hour, for an hour straight on that floor, okay? Like I told y'all, it was filled with so many people in there. Once I threw up, like I felt like a bunch of wind pup, like pipe up out of me. It was crazy. And like, I just threw up, okay? Then I look up. And the um, preacher's wife comes up to me and she's like, Michaela, like, are you okay? Are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. She's like, Do you, are you safe right now? Like, are you okay? Like, is it all gone? Is it all done? Like, do you still feel that urge to scream? Like, you need to let me know because that's a sign. And I'm like, yes, I feel better now. Even though in the inside, I still kind of feel like there was something, but it was in the works with God. That moment, I needed that to be out the way. So that way I could be able to, you know, get up out of bed. I won't be lazy. I won't be sad. I'll actually be encouraged to be in my word. And then as time progresses, God will start delivering me from those things little by little. It all won't happen at the same time. Because I, I expected it to all to happen at the same time. But it all won't happen at the same time. Because if it do, I was going to just do nothing but run back to what I was doing before that led me up into that moment. You feel me? So God was purposely... Like I said, placing little breadcrumbs. And then if he did that one thing, it would make me be like, God, what else can you do for me? And make me just chase after him more. So when I look up, everybody start clapping. The choir is still praising. The praises are still dancing. And the entire church is empty. Except for like a trickle of people here, a trickle of people there. When I tell y'all that church was full. And then whenever I look up everybody was gone i look into my cousin i'm like how long was i on that floor and she was like everybody was walking past you leaving asking if you was okay asking for your names and if they was gonna pray for you and all this other stuff. and i'm like bro i was so scared to go to church the next sunday because i thought everybody was gonna look at me like that girl had a demon in her and all this other stuff but every time when people see me they just embrace me with a hug every single time and granted i did fall back i did turn my back on god and go back to my sinful ways however god has still been good to me regardless of what i've been doing and with him delivering me from that and especially with me talking about it right now it makes me just want to go after god even more and just to put down all of this stuff that i'm doing and just focus on him more because my whole thing is i'll get in a relationship and pursue that person more than i would pursue god that's why lately i've just been like trying to really target my focus you know but yeah i'm telling y'all try god out for y'all if you ever find yourself inside of a love spell and you feel like it's backfiring on you baby you open up that bible you listen to your worship music and you call out to god until he deliver you from whatever it is Okay, so, so y'all, I saved this one for last because when you play on the enemy's territory, it's going to take God to get you out. You don't need to go to a reader. You don't need to do another spell to clear a spell. Baby, you need God on your side when you start tampering with stuff that you know nothing about. See, this is that I got to see if generation. What will happen if? If you listen to Please Excuse My Attitude this morning, you know it's the if factor. But this is what happens when you're afraid to be alone. Do you know what alone means? It means all one. It means all one with yourself. We're so afraid to be all one that we temper and tamper in stuff in an effort to have somebody by our side. Whether they love us or not. Whether they like us or not. And in these cases, whether it's voluntary or not. You can't tamper in darkness and walk in the light. You can't. Because that door is going to open another door. And it's going to open another door. That by the time you finish going through doors, you realize you so far away from safety, you don't even know how to get back. Because you're tampering with an enemy, you're not equipped to fight. Let's talk about it. You don't think about the consequences. You don't think about the effects. No wonder we have skinwalkers and white walkers and shapeshifters and everything walking the face of the earth now. Y'all are unleashing them by playing with stuff you can't control. 
You think it sounds cute to say you're casting a love spell in an attempt to make someone obsessed with you. Obsession isn't love. Obsession is dangerous. It's deadly. So now we no longer want people to fall in love with us naturally. We want to force a love bond. Anything forced isn't real. And why would I want you if I got to force you to love me? Huh? Why would I want you to stay if I got to put a spell on you to try to get you to stay? Are we okay? Drop in the comments and let me know what you think about all of this. Because I'm floored. Flabbergasted confused and you got people all over social media trying to tell you how to do love spell and all kind of other spells how to make a bond and a pack with a demon what at this point y'all might as well pull out a ouija board and play with it y'all are so damn disillusioned you are because you think everything is a joke you think everything is cute till you mess around and wake up in the middle of the night and something is hovering over you that you can't get rid of until it turns your life every which way but loose because you invited it in playing with spell do you not understand that there is a hierarchy in the enemy's camp they know what they're doing but you don't because you want to be baby witches and warlocks have you done the research or you watch too much Charmed and Sabrina the Teenage Witch that you think it's cute? You've been desensitized to it that you feel like, oh, I can do it too. Then you're confused when you start hearing voices, when you start seeing stuff, when your dreams are invaded, when your family starts getting attacked. Come on now. Drop in the comments and let me know what you think about all of this. Hit that like button for me. Y'all, I'm so at a loss for words right now. Consider joining the champagne gang. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified when we jump into whichever sector we jump into for another show. Because y'all, our chats be lit. <laughs> you need to come join us. And don't worry about it. If you're not sure just yet, we'll leave the light on for you. Consider supporting the channel. Everything that you see has been designed and created by me and I want to continue producing for you this stuff ain't cheap <laughs> so please consider supporting the channel listen I'm considering adding a section to the channel for inky noir champagne mysteries where when I drop a video over there we're able to come over here and have a discussion about it so we can go through the clues break down the clues and get our investigation discovery on what y'all think about that drop in the comments and let me know should we add a shadow hunter section to champagne secret so that we can jump into the noir syndicate over here and start breaking down some of these stories and see if we can put these clues together <laughs> let me know confidants always remember if it doesn't cause you to elevate baby it's causing you to depreciate now raise those glasses clink and let's drink till we meet again ta-ta D.B. Cooper, the elusive phantom of the skies. A man who vanished into thin air with a fortune and left behind a trail of intrigue that has captivated the world for decades. Join us, Shadow Hunters, as we embark on a journey into the heart of one of the greatest unsolved puzzles in history. It all began on a stormy November night in 1971. A man, suave and enigmatic, boarded a Boeing 727 under the alias D.B. Cooper. With a flick of a wrist and a note slip to the stewardess, he hijacked the aircraft, demanding a hefty ransom and parachutes before disappearing into the night sky. But what became of D.B. Cooper after he leaped into darkness? That, my friends, is the question that has haunted investigators and armchair sleuths alike for over half a century. Some say Cooper met his demise in the treacherous wilderness while others believe he vanished into obscurity, living out his days under an assumed identity. But I, dear shadow hunters, may have a different theory, one that may unravel the tangled web of deception surrounding this enigmatic figure. Join me 
as we delve into the depths of intrigue and mystery, following clues hidden in plain sight, and unearthing secrets long thought buried. For in the world of the Noir Syndicate, every puzzle can hold a solution, and every mystery a key to the truth. So grab your glass of champagne, make sure your doors are secure, and tune in, Shadow Hunters. Hit that like and subscribe so you'll be notified when we step into the Noir Syndicate to unravel this elusive tale that we call D.B. Cooper, Mystery or Mirage. Welcome to Inky Noir Champagne Mysteries.